And welcome, welcome. We have another edition of Sessions with Steph. Guys, I'm really excited. This one's going to be a fun one. I will tell you how I came about this idea of having these two guys on the show. But um, I'm really excited. I'm loving what I'm doing. This is a, it's, it's a music podcast. I interview, quote unquote, chat with uh, fellow friends, musicians. Uh, sometimes I don't know them. Sometimes it's the first time we meet. Whatever the case is. It's always fun. Uh, we want you to subscribe. We're on YouTube. Uh, we're on Apple Music. Uh, no, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, Spotify. Uh, look at look for our channel. Uh, we have two podcasts. One is Talk It Out with Lisa. We Hello. Have their voices there. And uh, we have sessions with Steph. We also have a TV series with TV, a YouTube series called Yukubat. And all of this is produced by JJR Studios which is our mother company, the guy, Louis here. Actually, it's our father company because he's male. Company, yeah. He just Lewis, changed his uh, gender. <laughs> he's feeling himself up now. Good job. Good job. He gave him a complex. That's what he does. He <laughs> produces our stuff. What you see, what you hear, it's all him. Uh, and I love doing it. It's such a blast, guys. Subscribe. Listen to us. Uh, we have different episodes every week. It's a blast. And I'm going to tell you how I came up with this, um, this interview, quote unquote, like I said. I was scrolling through my Facebook friends and uh, I saw a buddy of mine that I had seen a couple times. Well, not a couple times. We've known each other for many years. Never played together. But I remember always, every time I meet him, I start dying of laughter. The jokes just don't stop. So I already know that it's going to be a funny, uh, a funny podcast. And so I said, I need to have him on. This is going to be a blast. That's besides me watching his videos on Facebook. Uh, he sings really, really well. Uh, he's got different projects going on at the same time. Uh, very interesting. I'm always impressed with what he does. And then he, when I spoke to him, he said, nah, I want to have my buddy on me. We've been together since the beginning. So I definitely, and I was excited because I had heard so much about him, but we never actually met. Well, maybe we have met, but never Steph, had, Steph, Steph, Steph. we never had this, uh, oh, this <laughs> thing going on. So I'd like to introduce, we got Mimo Oliveri and Mario Biffarelli. Singer, up, songwriter, guys? guitar player extraordinaire, and I believe you have other other hats too, right? You you work with different companies, or yeah. you work with uh, Godin Guitars, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. right? Okay, but, uh, quote unquote work. I, I, you can explain your job after. Yeah, sure. Um, sure. So we're gonna get into a chat, guys. Thank you for coming. This is thanks uh, for having us, man. This came as a surprise. This, yeah, like I said, I was scrolling to Facebook. I saw, like, oh, I remember coming by. <laughs> A certain place, <laughs> and we would die of laughter all the time. That's that's a lifetime ago, brother. It's a lifetime ago, but uh, you know, I remember them all clearly because you always make me laugh. So I said, you know what? Part of the podcast yeah, world is laughing, having that's a good right. time. So if you can't laugh, then fucking go kill yourself. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. So <laughs> we're gonna have a chat. Um, I'm gonna start off with. I know you guys played. To, you guys have known each other for years. Yeah. So let's start off with present in the sense of. You right now are playing guitar with different projects, or yeah, I'm. Um, you know, we we always play. We never yeah, stop playing. Of course, right? musicians so are musicians. Over time, you accumulate some songs, you release some stuff. So I, I personally recently released a song called Parachute. Oh, cool! On a label from the UK called Mercia Records. Mm -hmm. It's with us, uh, Sony Orchard Distribution. So that's cool. But that was something I did for my for myself actually. You okay. Know? Um, and then of course I do the stuff with Mimo, uh -huh. his songs. And uh, we work on that, um, you know, outside of what we do. And we, you know, he's got his thing. <coughs> so it's whenever it's musical and it feels right, we, we do it. Sweet. Sweet. You know. And you're also working with Godin Guitars. That's right. That's my day gig. Okay. Know, I so. love it. Day gig. We, we are, I'm a mailman, man. And so <laughs> that's my day gig, man. That's what we do. Yeah. And what's your what's your position? I'm a VP of sales there for North America. Okay. Cool. And I take care of the reps, some key accounts, Eight. things of that nature. Cool. And uh, Like it's a cool. real job. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> but it's cool because you meet a lot of artists and musicians and a lot of people that, that you know, you would have been friends with outside of your job. You know, yeah. just people that you're there because you love music. Mm -hmm. You love guitar, you love Sweet. music. Sweet. It's a perfect day gig, let me tell you. Yeah. I would think, yeah. anyway. Yeah, for sure. And Mimo. So what I you're I sit on a chair all day. <laughs> <laughs> and you come up with ideas. Just try to come you up write with some songs. I write some <laughs> tunes. Call him because I don't know what the hell he do with that thing. <laughs> I I play it. I think I play it. I 
I literally call him on the he's phone. Better, he's better than he says. He's better than for sure. I know. Right? I know. See, I've seen the videos. I laugh. He makes jokes about himself. That no, I but I can't play. I, I honestly, guy, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't know how to play. He shows me. I literally, I swear to God, this, I'm not trying to be funny. I call him. I say, hey, when you have your first finger here and your third finger there, what is it? What is it? Yeah, yeah. Well, whatever. F sharp. I go, okay, remember F sharp because it's <laughs> part of the song I'm writing. So remember it. Right? I don't know. I honestly, God, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I don't. And I don't even want to know. If I listen to my cousin who was in our band, 30 years ago, he says, if I would have learned one chord a year, I would have known 30 by now. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but he's still playing so A minor. Fuck him yeah. and your guitar. I don't, don't want okay. so It's too complicated, man. It's like the six strings. I got yeah, five fingers. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. work. And you got to hit like a couple of them at the same time. Uh, it's a whole different, uh, yeah. it's a whole different world. <laughs> Arranged. So right. you guys started off in, in Crystal. We're going to go through all your projects. I know that. We're, Do whatever you want. Man. Of course. So you guys started off with Crystal. This is many years ago, I believe, right? Yeah. 88, 89. Yep, I was probably uh, yeah, 15. He was, he was 15 when I met him. Wow. 15 years old. I met him through a friend of ours, Charlie. You know Charlie, right? Uh, v Rox. Oh, v Rox. Yeah, of course. Who doesn't? He was already on the podcast. <laughs> there you go. Yeah? yeah, I met him through Charlie, and uh, I did a gig for my cousin who had a high school band at the time, and something happened with their singer, and he asked me to sing. And I'm like, really? I don't know how to sing. I've never sang a day in my life. Yeah. But I had long hair, so he figured I was good. <laughs> Look at you now, bro. <laughs> yeah. I'm still the uh, bastard. Anyway, <laughs> uh, so I did a show and apparently he was in the audience. Okay. And uh, I liked what we did that night. I'm like, this is this is pretty cool. You know, I, I can do this. You know, it's fun. Yeah. A lot of people. I like, so I, I asked my cousin, I said, do we continue this? Do we do this? He's like, well, if you want to, yeah, we can do this. I said, okay. But now we're going to build our own band. I didn't like the band he was in. Yeah. I said, let's build our own little band. You know, he goes, okay, well, we need people. Okay. Well, yeah. <laughs> It just so happened that night, somebody was in the audience and asked Charlie if they knew of a singer for another band, a separate band, who became the Outskirts. Oh, you know, yeah, Frank, totally. Frank. Them? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, I, I auditioned with them. Great guys, great music and whatever, but it wasn't my, my shtick at the time. But Freddie was in that band and I asked Fred, I said, listen, how about we start something together, you know? So then now, yeah. so now we're with you. It was me, my cousin and Fred. And then Charlie, like I said before, Charlie goes, well, there's this kid that I know. <laughs> uh, he's a Deep Purple now Deep Purple is my favorite band even when I wasn't in music I was a big music fan Okay, I love Purple I love Whitesnake all that stuff and I was a big Purple fan and he goes well this kid I know is a big Purple fan so I said give me his number and I called him I didn't know who he was I didn't know what he looked like I didn't even know if he owned a guitar and I didn't ask you I told you yeah. you were in my band remember that <laughs> yeah so I said you're in why because you like Deep Purple and that's what it is that's all I need I met him yeah and uh, we've been together ever since, man. Wow. We've been together ever since. Years. It was, I mean, I remember growing up and hearing the name Crystal. It was a yeah, big we, thing. We it was a big thing. It was, you know? it was like, whoa, oh, yeah, Crystal's playing, you know? Yeah, the, the, parks, the park gigs and yeah, the rock fun. pile and all that we stuff. We did a lot I, more. Yeah. We, we, we toured the country a couple of times sure. together. It was a big deal. Yeah, we did uh, We did a couple of big gigs. It's a major acts, a major Canadian acts at the time. You know, we, we shared stages with some... Uh, some nice people, you know, some, okay, so some name Canadian me, icons. Name me an experience, something a wild, <sighs> okay, something cut. to make this. No, 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 no. <laughs> or else here. It's, but, uh, here it's uh, X-rated, we can say whatever yeah. we want. You know yeah. what was really cool, I think, about the band is like that we didn't know, but we, we worked really, really hard. Like we used to practice three, four nights a week and gig two, three nights a week, like literally. Wow. And then when we were on, on the road, we'd, we'd be gone for 14 weeks at a time in a truck, like touring. Yeah. Like, like you don't come back home for three months. And you get a, a really good work ethic. And then we'd come back to Montreal. <coughs> we'd do like bigger shows in Montreal. And I remember like like some of the sound men would say, man, you guys are tight. You guys. Are... And we didn't realize it, but you, 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 you play every night, whether you're happy, whether you're mad, whether you're tired. And you just become a better musician. Of course. And the thing that I found with us that I'm still very proud of is, you know, we wrote our own songs. We did our own stuff. We, 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 we had the best uh, unit, I find. We never did drugs. We never got drunk. It was, we went there. Easy. <laughs> I was going to say, oh, no, but you know, like we never, we, our thing was. We never woke up in a shower with cowboy boots on. <laughs> that's right. That's, that's maybe once or twice. Maybe but, once or twice. We, we, we were, like, <laughs> we were serious when, when we were young, we were kids. We'd come back home, but then we'd have the ability to go to the best studios, buy the best gear and always improve the band. Yeah. So that was so it was always cool. band so first. You, you knew you knew the line to draw, like because I was going to yeah. ask. I was ready we to ask. Lucky. Yeah. So was it the typical rock and roll? You know, we watched the Motley Crue special. Yeah. I mean, was it that? 
I'll be honest. We because <laughs> I know uh, his answer. You, you know what? I can tell you. I can tell you. It's funny because I watched. I watched that movie. The and, dirt. And, the and, dirt. Yeah, and I kept right. saying to, to myself, "We." It was that that we were like. It, it didn't shock us what you saw there. It's just and at it, a higher level. It's just same yeah. shit happens yeah. to everybody. I mean, I'm yeah, sure the Stones have stories, and Motley Crue's got stories, and yeah. and we got. I guess when there's more Motley money, quote unquote, it's just at a higher level. Of, it's higher to have. Yes. Yeah, more. We were, you still get the bullshit. You still, yeah. you know, you still in a stupid van. Yeah. And you still almost True. die with accidents, and you still have idiots in the in the audience. And then there's people that love you, and there's people that can't stand you. It's just like everybody else. And, and you learn to negotiate with you know managers, guys who are trying yeah. to rip you off, uh, bar uh, owners, uh, agents. You grow up, man. Like you grow up real quick. Let me tell you, you grow Especially up real quick. But we were a unit because you're, you're only the five of you on the road. Mm -hmm. You know, so we were also of... lucky in those days. Sorry, Biff. we were lucky because out of fluke chance, we ended up meeting Vince Marino from Mahogany Rush. And Vinny became a mentor, wow. and he was a. It's it's weird to say because I had posters of the guy in my room. I idolized him, and again, I had nothing to do with music. I just loved music. Yeah. I wasn't a musician, and we idolized him. And 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 he he led us the right way. He's like, guys, you know, and no offense to anybody in Montreal, it was. But if you want to do this, your competition isn't the guy at the street. It's not him. It's not the guy up the street. Your competition is gonna be. Steven Tyler, your competition is going to be John Bon Jovi. You understand what I'm saying? You have to look at so it that way. You, you have, have to raise the bar. You know, you that's in anything that you do. Look, True. you know, we were big in sports. Yeah. If you want to be big in sports, you want to play hockey. Yeah, well, your competition isn't Mimo from the corner. Exactly. It's Connor McDavid. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If you don't do that, then if you, don't you stay at the level. You, you right. project where you're going to be, right? Yeah. Part we were very lucky. He, he, he took us under his wing, and I thank him for everything, yeah. everything that we've done in music. Every, I mean, Vinny was... Everything. He'd come us. on the road with us. He'd come on the road, wow. man. Yeah. Come and tell us. And there's the nights where he'd say, guys, well done, man. Then there's a couple nights where he looked at us and he goes, you guys are garbage. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like literally. <laughs> yeah, literally. Another one happened. like yeah. that. And, and then we would judged. look at ourselves in the face and like, dude, what the fuck are we doing here? Uh -huh. Vinny says we're garbage. Yeah. Wow. Vinny says we're garbage. So let's get out there and make him proud. And that's what we would do. And we would try to make him proud. You know what I mean? And that, that brings up a lot of good work ethic. You know? Taught us about dynamics. He taught us about everything. Play, play a song the way it's supposed to be played. An intro like an intro, verse like a verse, and a chorus <laughs> like a chorus. And look at the crowd, and eye contact, and what, all this other shit that you're probably, it's boring. Yeah. But, but man, it's all part of it. It's part of it. Yeah, he and produced he our taught first us EP. everything, everything we know. And how many albums did you guys have? We had the, the first little cassette that we wanted to Three and all, I think we did, right? Well, we did the first little cassette. Oh, yeah, yeah, We, yeah. we were literally 16 years old. We did a two-song cassette yeah. one contest. Okay. And we did uh, the Beg Borrow Steel with uh, Vince, and we mm -hmm. did that at Frank's studio, yeah. Frank Marino, when he had Starbase. Then we had the Plug This, and we had three chords in a yeah, song, and this. then there's a bunch of stuff that was never released. Gotcha. <laughs> Which one day you will release? I'm sure. I'll be, yeah, that, that's the goal. Soon enough. Yeah. Sweet, sweet, yeah. sweet, sweet. Okay, well, I mean, from there, that was quite a few years, what, 10 years or something? The How band, yeah, like, say together. I think it was more than 12. 12 I was counting 12, the other 12, 13 years, yeah, something like that. 12, same yeah. guy, same everything. Yeah, went through hell. Who's the wildest one? Shut up. <laughs> I mean, I know. I already know the answer. I would think. I don't know. We're all different. It's all depends. Wild. Yeah, depends you know, the night. We yeah. were more funny than than wild. Like we would just like we everything was on the table in regards to if it's gonna make you laugh, we're gonna do it. So sometimes you get in trouble for saying stuff and do stuff, but we knew we would laugh. You know what I mean? Gotcha. Yeah. We weren't like no, we, were, we weren't crazy. We weren't. We all knew. We all knew that it was all about going home and recording. And making the best record that we could at the time. Yeah. Don't forget, we didn't have all this shit these kids have today. True. I remember sending out a little cassette. Yeah. If you guys yeah. know what a fucking cassette is. Yeah, a cassette. Thing, <laughs> and a uh, little cassette. It would cost us $3.34 in an envelope yeah. to send it to somewhere in the States, in California. Yeah, the and package, the promo kit. The whole yeah, shit. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Nowadays, you, you know, you push a button, the fucking world has your, your music and it's all good. Whatever. I did the same thing. Like Exactly. I, I wasn't in that world. I was doing like, you know, the... the corporate mm -hmm. uh, whatever with my and it was instead of cold Same. calling we would get a you know the envelope with exactly. the package with that's the what it was in those days and send it to every company that's what it was yeah. and that's what we did you know but again on the road and i remember being in places dude I, i'll tell you places yeah. you're like what the fuck are you talking about <laughs> remember we were in that dawson creek crap? yeah yeah dude like 20 hours of daylight uh, i mean of, of darkness I'm like, what the fuck are oh doing? yeah and like none of it or something right dude, i don't know yeah, what the hell there, it was yeah and i'm like what are we doing here but it you know, because that doesn't help your career. It doesn't. It doesn't. I don't care what anybody tells you. I know a producer right now. He left about six months ago to live in Nunavut. 
Like, yeah. what the fuck, bro? <laughs> the, the, <laughs> what the I, fuck? You know, at the end of the day, we didn't, and, and we were lucky. You know, he, he's like my left arm. He really is. He's my best friend, my left arm. He, he's everything to me. And we would, you know, because it was nights where I wanted to, fuck, yeah. man. It's hard. Dude, I remember one night on I just own. got out. I, I, I ran out of my hotel room and I just screamed because I, I just, yeah. I had to let it out. And he's like, dude, chill. And vice versa. There was nights where I had yeah. to, oh, of course, relax. So we would kind of ground ourselves because I'm telling you, man, it kills you out there. The yeah. road kills you. you. But at the end of the day, we all had that aim. We, all, we knew that we're, we're, we're making money here. Come back home to make the best record. And at the time, we were known to be the the uh, merchandise kings. We had t-shirts yeah, and caps and pins wow. and posters and, and, posters and yeah, fuck you name we it. We had, had okay? Because that's what it was in those days. I'm not saying it's going to work now. Yeah. Actually, right now, don't be a musician. No <laughs> fucking, <laughs> Screw that, I was man. telling your brother before, I'm like, you want you have kids now. You want to be making music? No. no. Go learn how to make orange cones. Yeah. Build orange cones <laughs> and Montreal. fucking sell them a dollar <laughs> each. You'll be a millionaire by Thursday. <laughs> Lisa, <laughs> if you have any questions for rock and roll, now's the time because these know, guys, I'm listening. these I'm guys, jump in. I'm going to jump in. So, so in terms of um, from there, did you go? Because I know years. I mean, I freaked out because we knew each other for years. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to say the word Etel Melody when you worked there. I used to come see you all the time, <laughs> um, and and we used to laugh and shoot the shit all the time. And then I remember years later, like I said, Facebook, and I'm like, oh, ACDC tribute band. What? You know and what? then I saw a video and I was like, ah, this is his, this is his game. Now he's he's where he <laughs> everybody, should be. See, that's yeah. why everybody thinks I'm this big metal head. Uh -huh. Okay. But the ACD, the ACDC thing, it came to me as an accident. And but all the best things always come in the I guess yeah, it was honest to God. I turned it down. I turned it down for really? months. I turned it down for months. And Sergio, mm -hmm. one day the guys of the band came to the e and Come on, man, come and audition, come and do this. I'm like, dude, I don't want the fucking gig. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. Yeah. And plus, I hadn't been singing for a couple of years. I didn't think I still had the pipes. You play there. bass, right? Who, me? No. No, man. No, 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 no. This, this is what I play. <laughs> no, no. I, I just microphone, XLR, and hey, there, but I don't Smart. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I turned the gig down. I didn't want, then Sergio just says, like, dude, just fucking go, man. Just go. Go do your thing, whatever. And I did. And, uh, did the audition and they gave me the gig on the spot and I said guys I don't want the gig I don't want I, I, I literally I didn't want but you know I met the guys and some of the guys are really cool you know John's a great guy and we hit it off you know and I'm like okay look if I'm gonna give this thing a shot then we're gonna do it properly yeah we're gonna you know again because of Vinny and whatever we don't do anything half-assed to us it's the best at the time you yeah. follow what I'm saying and I said guys if I'm gonna do this then we're gonna be the best that there is and just picked up and everybody's freaking out over it and this ACDC thing and it's yeah, but you guys do it well and you guys it's, we, but, but it's a show again we work very hard at it yeah. you know we practice very hard at the sounds the look the the whole shtick even even down to the props we got smoking cannons and bells and whatever he builds it, a lot of the props and, and it so works really man. Not it works people credit, freak out really you know what I mean listen man you've been to many shows I've been to thousands of shows you walk yeah. into an arena First thing you see is that beautiful drum set or the the, the stacks of marshals, the wall of marshals. Yeah. That's the first thing. But it's, it's, the, it's the truth. That's what you see, right? Yeah. So visually, I know people visual. That's what it is. When you walk into an arena, all about that. the first thing you see yeah. is the gear, right? And you're like, whoa. I walk so, to the soundboard just to yeah, take a look around. Yeah, whatever interests you, right? That's yeah, what I'm saying. So we said, let's do that. And we did. We worked on the music and now we have bit of both and i'm so proud of it because we really really worked hard and we travel all over north america and uh we become like you know north no, america's number you know, one acdc yeah. tribute band uh, i'm sure you've heard i book uh, i book at a brasserie in, in uh, villa sal brasserie that i paid they've had music there for 30 years mm -hmm. and he you know my buddy called me years ago i need you to book because i'm tired of doing it no problem it's a pleasure whatever so i started booking there and recently the past two years he said, i want to get some tribute bands in Dude, when you get tribute bands, it's a different game. It's, it's a game. different game. It's not uh, it's not your little band that's promoting themselves. It's and I've been I, I, I I've been meaning to call you for it, but at a certain point, I'm like, you know what? Let me wait because I want to I want to wait to build up enough to to get the best. You know, yeah, yeah. And, it's and uh, I know that. Listen, I love it. I love it. But again, everybody thinks we're, I'm this big metalhead, ACDC, and the stuff, the new stuff that we did now with the after show, with me and Beth. It's so different. It's a, people are gonna say, "What?" The yeah, fuck? you won't. You won't, you won't recognize it. You just do it. You nice. just won't. It's not. It's just stuff that I wrote a couple years back, maybe four, five, six years ago. 
you know, going through some shit and whatever. We're definitely going to go through. We're going to talk about that. Yeah. I have time. a question. Can I just oh. jump right of in? Of course. Go ahead. If I would see you, it would be amazing. <laughs> 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 Fucking lights are strong. <laughs> I could stand, though. I'm short, but I could You're stand. You're short, really? Did yes. you see me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question. Sure. If you can have fans remember one thing about you, what would it be? For me? Pants yeah. on. <laughs> For me? Loyalty. For both. Loyalty. Why? Loyalty to, to each other, to one another. Why? Because if you don't have that, you got nothing in life. You're right. Uh, yeah. There's true. a reason why Richards and Jagger are still together. They mm -hmm. can't stand each other. Yeah. But there's that. And me and this guy, we just finished each other. Sent. Look, for example, mm -hmm. a couple weeks ago, I had an idea. Again, I don't know what the fuck I'm playing. <laughs> I go, I'm about to do this, whatever. Oh, yeah. He goes, well, I have a riff. And it's perfect. It's perfect. It just, it magic. It just, it just, I don't know, since day one. Or I'll just email him a, uh, or send him a voice memo or he'll do the same. It just works. It just works. And it's the loyalty. Because if you don't got that, well, that's shit. But oh. how would you transmit that, let's say, on a stage? Mm -hmm. Something through you your see music it. or through you yourself? See you see it. You see it. People see it. People are not yeah. stupid. You see it. You see, when you, when you go watch concerts, we've been to concerts where I remember seeing you know, Joe Perry and Steven Tyler almost falling. I was front row and they were like literally leaning on each other, almost falling. And we're like, and we're like uh, <laughs> Sorry. this is not, this is not, a, they're like, something's going on here. Something's going on. You, you can tell. Yeah. You can yeah. tell. Yeah. And there's nights where they're just, and I'm like, whoa, man, this is after, you know, it. This yeah. is it. This is it. You tell. People not stupid. You can tell. The and loyalty for me is the big thing. I'll yeah. tell you from knowing him, when he says loyalty, yeah. he means it with his with his buddies, of course, with Mario, but he also means it in terms of loyalty to music. So he's the type of guy, like he said, his music doesn't sound anything like the ACDC tribute, yeah. but because he's loyal to music, he studied, I'm sure he studied what AC, how he, he's supposed to sing it. And he Everything. puts his heart and soul mm -hmm. and he's loyal to the music to make it sound as best as it can be, as best as it for yeah. me, that's what it is. If you're not honest with it, then then don't do it. You know, that's that's me. You, I don't yeah, know. It's kind of being authentic. That's yeah. what I was gonna yeah. say. Authentic. So, for example, like, you know, sometimes we'd be playing bars, and the, the club owner would say, "Okay, uh, tomorrow night, I want you to play this song and this song." I was like, "No, we're not doing it because that's not what we do." And it would be, "This is what we do." And sometimes we we paid dearly for it, and sometimes we were rewarded for it. But so we I, stuck together. That's yeah. it. <clears throat> Loyal. Yeah. You know, and, and he's so right. We would go into the clubs. You can't play this. You gotta play. They wanted us to play what was on the radio. Well, yeah. fuck you. That's not what we do. <laughs> Literally. Good. But it's true. Good. Yeah, right? And, and, and sometimes it got us in shit. It yeah. really did. Yeah. But it got me where I am today, sitting yeah. here with you. Yeah. This, this thing is like, <laughs> I don't know if that's a big yeah. thing. Yeah. 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 But I'm still standing. Gotcha. There saying. you go. Well, okay. standing on one knee there, but whatever. But yeah. yeah. No, but it's like, why would you do something that's not of you, right? Like, yeah. why would you like put so much effort into something that you don't and like? And you know what? Do? So I did an, remember when I did that instrumental nylon strings? Mm -hmm. and I was, I was, after after the band crystal kind of fell apart after 12 13 years the music scene changed i think i thinking back now i probably went through a, a, probably a depression because it was like i was mourning the band i was mourning my friends i was mourning that's all i knew since i was 15 this this band right so i started playing nylon string guitar and i was writing lullabies but and then what am i doing i was like well if i wrote it that, that's true to me right yeah, so i think definitely. that's we're both saying the same thing yeah where the songs that we recorded now, you won't say, oh, Mimo wrote those songs, but they're killer songs. Of course. And they might be different. They might be not like full shred, whatever, but they're just as powerful. Gotcha. And uh, I think being true to yourself. If you just stay true to yourself and, and you know what? It, 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 word got around, man, because we when we toured, when we first started, they tried to fuck with us. Oh, you guys are going to play for recognition. Oh, yeah? Is that what we're going to do? We're going to play for recognition? <laughs> Really? Yeah. Okay. You tell them it's good. You know that. <laughs> it's good that you well, know that. You know what the Italian association parties were that. Hey, yeah. come and play. Don't worry. You're gonna eat, and everyone you're gonna yeah. get yeah. contracts. We never, yeah. Yeah. we never played for free. We never ever. ever. I did this paved to play Love shit. I, I'm like, what the fuck is yeah. wrong with these kids? You yeah. pay to play. Yeah. You have no money, they and you're going and pay yeah. to play. It's because then that's what you're worth, right? If no. You play for nothing. You're, no. That's what 100%. they perceive. No. You're projecting. You're, you're projecting where you're going. Yeah. And it's it's all about that, right? And we stuck to it, man. And I'm telling you, sometimes it got us in trouble. Yeah, it really did. But the, the musicians are the first ones to to kind of get screwed, you know, and the last ones to get paid. Whether it's uh, on a movie, whether it's oh, I need yeah. music, but like at one point you have to put your foot down. 
100%. And we were young. Maybe we were stupid. Maybe. Like, listen, no. we've told some people to go to hell I'll never, that I'm like, I'll never what? say that. I'll like, never he's telling that. me, remember when you, like, what? I did that? Really? Too bad. Look, too I, had, bad. I had one night, this is the funny, it was a wedding. Stupid wedding in a reception hall. So they had cocktails. And back then, this is years ago, my band, you know, we had, we played for the wedding and Oh, would you like the cocktail service? And the client's like, um, you know what? No, nah, it's, you know, it's an extra 500 bucks for a 45 minutes or whatever. Yes or no. And if they take it, they pay. So I'm standing there and they didn't, they didn't take that. We were just playing in the hall. And the owner of the hall comes, are you guys going to put some music? <laughs> Actually, no. Wow. What are you guys talking about? It says, it's, it's not nice. It's nice. They put the music. I said, are you seriously telling me what I have yeah. to do with my business? Yeah, you guys, it's good for you. People hear you and then you get... They don't get it. I said, you know what? You know what's good for you? A lobster on every fucking main dish right yeah, now. You yeah. have 300 guests. Go buy the lobster. It's going to look good gonna, for you. They're going to know you. They're going to know you after, after right? Oh, recognition, no. man. You know what? Recognition. The guy who serves yeah. lobster. Yeah. Right? It's, and, but it, it's never it. it's never the same the other way around. They just know? don't it's, get it. They don't get it. They I'm telling you. We, we've and got music's the last on the list. Yeah. I'll be honest. That's the nicest thing about having a day job is that you can play the music you want. I swear, I swear. Because near the end, it's like, man, no, I'm, I'm not playing yeah. that song. Yeah, that's not fuck what it, we do. Fuck and it. it's not because we want to be like, like against the grain. It's because no. that's not what we do, right? Yeah. And that, the best of you doesn't come out if you don't. If and then it's stuff. fake. And then and it's, it's not like what she said. Yeah. Then people, exactly. again, coming back to the, yeah, people see it, man. You see it. I'm sure you've been to shows and said, yeah. they're on tonight. Yeah. They're on they're tonight. Feeling, or yeah. what the hell? What <laughs> the fuck is this? I saw Van Halen. I love Van Halen. Yeah, I know you do. The night that I saw them, he wasn't on. They were phoned it in. He was in a different plot. He was, I don't know where he was, man. Yeah. Too bad, because I, I love the guy so much. Listen, to their defense, speaking for myself, okay? It's hard, man. There's nights where, course, you course, remember, course. we played, uh, one year, one year, we had, I remember, we had 31 days off in a year. Think yeah, about that. Shit. Yeah. That's okay? And some of the places we played, we had to play five sets of 45 minutes i'm not what even a, i can't a make a this shit up man. i'm not that stage. smart she would have a digital <clears throat> clock remember that one oh, she had a digital shit. clock on stage so it's like it was like if i had a gun i would have shot her 12 times <laughs> he's had seven man. dreams about and, that. and you're playing fucking four songs and that clock didn't move it's wow. like 802 and oh like, jesus God. christ 80, and you play another song 804 what the fuck that <laughs> song was four minutes long at one point we'd get hungry on stage <clears throat> this guy actually ordered i ordered pizza i ordered pizza <laughs> I just take, uh, we're in random no, we're I, mean, I just got to the cell stuff. phone or something i don't remember what it was but he ordered pizza and the guy was came a kid upstairs. dancing in front of look at you some I don't know, domino shit oh I go, that's right yeah, yeah the go, domino he's dancing he goes, yeah I said, give me a fucking pizza <laughs> he's like what I go, go fucking get me a pizza i'm hungry and i had it on stage i took a bite it was boiling hot and I gave it to Fred, remember? Hey, burned his and lip. And I burned his lip. <laughs> I went, pow, in his mouth. <laughs> so did you, from it's Crystal, true. you went, uh, did you have any projects between that and, like, writing songs and stuff with uh, Mimo? Or did you have, were you in different uh, band? After that? Yeah. No. No, not no. really. Not really. No, I not did really. that instrumental thing. And okay. then. Uh, then I, I got with the, the ACDC thing. So yeah. it was kind of. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's kind of, you know, it's like, next thing you know, you're like gotcha. 25 years yeah, later. Yeah, exactly. It goes fast, right? No. So, But this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This stuff I wrote it years ago, and anybody, not many people knew that I was writing, but the people that did know, you know, like Mike Marino, which is Vinny's nephew yeah. and friend's nephew. <clears throat> and I told him, I said, Mike, this only happens if I do it with Biff. If not, yeah. the songs will stay on my phone. And yeah. I told you that. Yeah, that's true. I told you a hundred times. And again, with the loyalty thing, you know. To what well, we're going to get into your your project, that's for sure. Yeah. That's the biggest. So. I want to touch on the Izzo Blues Co uh, oh. Coalition. Yeah, that's it's cool. It, it, I, I I saw the video. Yeah. I was like, oh man, this is great. That also came about as a is it just a like happy you? accident? I guess like okay. Bob Ross used to say, we don't have make mistakes. We make happy <laughs> That's accidents. Right. Yeah, gotcha. It's fucking little bit. Do you enjoy that? You is that? I mean, I know. You I love it. Everything. I'm a big blues guy. If you know that, I'm a. I love the blues. I'm mm -hmm. a big blues fanatic. I love my one of my favorite singers of all time is Howlin' Wolf. I love the Wolf. I just that attitude, that chart. I love. I just love Muddy, Muddy Waters. Anyway, I'm a big blues guy, and. uh I had an idea that I wanted to do the blues record with Biff. <clears throat> and then Tino came out and said, you know, I'm doing this, I'm looking for a singer. And Tino's manager, uh, drummer, partner, whatever, is my drummer in the ACDC thing. Okay. He's the drummer. And uh, he asked me, he says, listen, Tino would like for you to come in. And, and I had a great, Tino's a great musician. Mm -hmm. He really is. He, he's, he's a great musician. He can play. And I did it, and it was fun. And again, we're playing blues, man. I mean, I can, you know, yeah. Then we did some cover tunes, too. We did uh, 
But then old Etta James too, we did uh, I'd Rather Go Blind and we did a, you know, a guy and a girl, whatever. And uh, it was great, man. It was, it was awesome. It was awesome. Okay. So let's get into the project because you're going to be releasing an album. Do we have a timeline more or less or is it the recording? I'd say about early 2022. Yeah, early next year. Okay. Early next year. So, I mean, okay. Generally, we usually have performances or people that want to promote their songs. Yeah. I'm not going to ask you guys to do that because it's not released yet. But it's you, not, that's, you were mentioning, yeah, it's not, we're not going to do that. But you were mentioning a little riff. Would you give us that little, oh. just a little riff, just to give us to have a little it, bit of it's, it's music just, on there. What we were talking about before is like, <laughs> I don't know if I'm in the thing, but oh, that sounds great. sometimes he'll, he'll have something and, and I'll be playing, right? And I'll, I'll, I'll like the other day I was like, Oh my god i got a verse for that and it just it's it's just how that song starts that's the process right and it's just, just little things like that goes, you come up with lyrics and then you'll always, say i got this always, line always, always, always really you always. know or, or or sometimes it'll be like i remember when uh we wrote um uh runaway train yeah i remember exactly where we were, we were at the pioneer club we were doing sound check and we were waiting and i did something like uh and he's like oh I'll keep doing that and he goes go and then it was like next thing you know it's like, And sometimes um, we'll start something at, that's not good, scrap, next, next, next. We'll just bang it out that way. Wow. So you guys have like sessions or is, you kind of get together and say, hey, let's have a few drinks and or bingo. Just you're With together, your buddies, you get together. Oh my God, pull out the guitar. When you least try. expect it. It, it always happens with the most expected. I mean, you can't you can't go and say, okay, I gotta roll write a song. It doesn't work. No, no, no. You no. sit down and nobody does that shit. Nobody Let me talk about shit. the bar in the corner, you know. Nobody yeah. does that shit. It just comes out. It just comes out. And like I said, with him. And you heard this, right? You you all heard what he just did. It's I was ready to rock already. <laughs> and I hear I hear the little scream, is, the rasps coming out. He is a phenomenal guitar player. Oh, he is know, a phenomenal okay, player. You. Shut up. He's a, he's a <laughs> fucking phenomenal guitar player. He's to me, he's the greatest guitar player I've ever played with. Oh, that's nice. and uh, he's my stage left guy. Every time we look, and, hey, the Kumba, he's there. You know, like no matter what, you know. So he's actually, that, he's actually he's not only a, says Kumba, but he's actually my best man. When I come back. Wow. <laughs> okay. Well, there you <laughs> so, go. So it's so he he's genuine. To me, yeah. he's the greatest guitar. You know, and, and all of us in the band, and Crystal, my cousin was the bass player, and Freddie, mm -hmm. who was still with me now with, with Twenty One Gun Salute. Freddie's okay. still playing with me, thirty some odd years. I'm sorry, I took him out of college. That's right. right. He went to Vanny. I was at Vanny like, What the oh, fuck are you doing in Vanny? So I go, we'd be gigging, right? Like uh -huh. we'd be gigging with Crystal and everything, and and we put I put up my posters at the back. So it'd be like these these big billboards, and it would be classical recital and uh, opera tonight, and this and that. I put the Crystal poster. Boom. Gosh. <laughs> and all these jazz guys, they would they would say ah, they would they would make fun of me yeah. because they're like oh that's easy music, and I'm like man, you guys have no idea, no idea. And I I was actually very turned off by going there, and I'm yeah. like. Yeah, but you learn more three weeks on the road than you would have four years of venue. Exactly. Right? So what happens is I'm like, hey, you know what? I'm gonna go do it for real. And I told my guitar teacher at, at Vanny, and he's like, man, he goes, I hate to see you go, but I get you. You know, yeah. and we went on the road and it was like, and then you got Vince Marino as your teacher. Hmm. So I would bunk with him sometimes. Okay. So I'm getting lessons from Vince every day. How do you not learn? You're getting lessons from Vince Marino. Look, yeah. there's there's like it's all about uh finding a middle ground to everything. Yeah. Right. Like you can't, there's no music. I, I play in a lot of salsa bands. Right. Yeah. And they're like, the I love salsa music and they're phenomenal musicians. Yeah. And they look and they'll say, cause I play in a pop corporate band as well. And they'll say, well, that's easy. You know, yeah, this yeah, is hard. No, there's a swing to everything. There's a there's, feel there's a groove. There's a blues is three chords, 90% of the times. But if you don't feel it and if you don't get that exactly, if you don't, that's not there. We were just talking about that video that uh, Keith Richards uh, posted. <laughs> And he's just on a chair with his with his telly, yeah. and he hits three chords. It's like it's over. It's, it's like, over. It's over. I'm right? gonna tell you a quick story. About thirty years ago, Ronnie Wood from the Stones came to town. <laughs> Remember this one? Yeah, we were there. <laughs> okay. Ronnie Wood came to town, and he was playing. And I, I, we big Stone, especially him, we're big Stones fan. I'm a I'm a Beatles fan, as you can tell. And, um, <clears throat> so Ronnie was in town, and he came out. And we were front row. He came out. He did not even have a guitar on him. All he had was a cigarette. Mm -hmm. and, he went, 
fucking people, including me, yeah. went ballistic. Because that's a stone, and it's, I'm not. He's a stone, yeah. and I'm not. Yeah. And the attitude, just the way he walked on that stage, to me... It's authentic. It goes back it's to real. that. It's real. It goes back to that. Joe Terry, saying. same thing. Yeah. It goes 100%. back to that. You can't lie about it. You just can't. You yeah. can't. You can't lie. You see it, man. Stevie Wonder would see it. You know? And it yeah, could be for see. any style of music. Like, anything. anything. Like, uh, it's authentic. Like you said, the salsa thing, whatever. I know your brother was big on, on the salsa thing too. Yeah. It's real. It's true. And it comes out. And when it doesn't, give it up. It's not yeah. for you. It's all about that. It's not for you. The guy's from uh, Mark Antony. Yeah. His band, right? I'm so, going in December. <laughs> that's it. So, oh, yeah. So I went to a couple of their shows. The guitar player is one of our clients. And that band is on fire. Oh, fuck yeah. Fire. You appreciate good music, but you could tell that that's what they do. Yeah. That's yeah. what, yeah. of course. Yeah. That bass player is a monster. You can't, you player, can't cheat around that. Same thing. You just yeah. can't. You the can't. horns. The, and I think that's that's the thing for us. And, and the other thing is, he was talking earlier about when he was playing and his cousin asked him, hey, you want to come and sing? I was there that night. <laughs> and I remember I was in a, a, a little band with my buddies. And the one thing I knew is that to make a band successful, you need a, a, a rock star of a lead singer. And I saw this guy that night and I'm like, see, a guy like that, that that's a that's, singer. That's what we need. Singer, because a lot of times, you know, the drummer wants to sing and the, the keyboard player wants to be a guitar player. <laughs> it's all wrong. Like everybody in yeah. our band had a role. And I just wanted to be his Joe Perry. Like, gotcha. I just want to be his, you know, the guy yeah. next to the singer yeah. rocking out. And that's, once you know your role and you create that band. But every lead singer needs someone to know they have their back, right? That's it's, it. It's, it's a partnership, like you said. Yeah. It's a partnership. That's it. if, uh, and the only reason I write songs sometimes by myself is just to see, hey, can I really do this? But the thing I like to do the most is, is like, you know, write with Mimo, play with Mimo, because I do my thing, he does his. <laughs> and I think that's the chemistry, you know? Gotcha. And that's the fun. And that's why this project was sold. So so what we heard before, is that a sample of what? That was the, something we did 30 years ago. The new stuff now is totally different. Really? It's uh it's not as uh it's not as rock and roll blues. Chime as in, chime in, yeah. That, that's I wrote that song years ago because he showed me that chord. What's that chord called? D minor. That D minor. he showed me that. <laughs> that's that's right. I love it. I'm a I that I <laughs> so I, he goes, "Yeah, dude. Like, how do you even do that? You look like you're crippled." Well, one time he wrote uh, the song that with one of our songs with uh, with Crystal called Hat Man. Yeah, uh, <laughs> man. Uh, yes, right, Hat Man. <laughs> I think yeah. I think I taught you a D chord. D chord, yeah. And, and then you just took it. And he goes, I, I went there. And I wrote that song because we were walking in the streets, right? And I found a hat. Uh -huh. I found a hat, a straw hat. I I went back to the hotel room and I wrote, I saw something on TV or something about a guy that robbed something and left his partner, robbing partner behind. Or I'm like, that's a cool story, man. So I wrote a song about it called Hat Man and Jimmy Bean. And it was on the album. And all because of he told me that, that chord, chord that thing. That D chord. Yeah. Wow. See? I'm telling, I know it sounds stupid, man. No, but it's that's just what music the is. the way it is. I, I'm honestly, is. I wish I would play. I wish I could play. I, I can't. But I have him, so fuck it. That's, yeah. Music is, you know, I look at Seinfeld the same way as I look at music. When I look <laughs> at, I, honestly, it's weird, but I look at Seinfeld and they made a show out of, they call it nothing. But it's, it's everyday everything. situations. It's you everything. could talk Seinfeld all day with this guy. Right? Yeah. It's everyday it's, situations. It's a situation that you just don't think of. You're in the metro holding yeah, the yeah. pole and, yeah. oh my God, is this guy crazy next to me? And and it's a whole show. Again, it's the truth. They were honest. It's the truth. It always and music that. is that. You, you're walking, you saw a hat and it inspired you to write. I found a hat. I found a stupid straw hat. I'm not going to tell you what we did that night. <laughs> well, we had to, with the hat. <laughs> well, because we had to evacuate the hotel because I found a shampoo you know. bottle with my drummer oh, yeah. in the room. I was and in Brandon, right? I don't know what the fuck it was. But I know that the hotel had a hot tub. <clears throat> hot tub. And I poured the whole bottle of shampoo in the hot tub, <laughs> not knowing that this stupid thing. Dude, there was bubbles in the fucking lobby. <laughs> there was bubbles in the lobby. Uh, like, th there's people that checking in. Like, this place is really clean. <laughs> Can I have a room for tonight? And there's fucking soap in there. Right? <laughs> and, oh my god oh, this is awesome. I, I just remember that remember that yeah, yeah. guys I, I want to do something um, yeah. we do a little game 
just to break. It's not right, even to cool. break the ice because the ice is broken. But <laughs> survey says it's a little, survey says yeah, it's a little game we do. It's something that I do called first thought. Every first what? First thought. Every guest that I have plays this quote unquote game, mm-hmm. and basically I'm gonna throw something out. I'm gonna either ask you a question or I'm gonna say something, and you're gonna give me your first thought. Whatever pops to mind when I say this thing, it's gonna. Some are gonna be pretty easy. Like let's say the you first, go first one. It's gonna be nice. You're gonna go for, Yeah, we're gonna switch. <laughs> okay. So I mean, this one's pretty simple. Favorite food? Fries. Nice. Oh, like, ah, yes. Like junk food. French fries. fries. Anything but fish. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <That's> a <laughs> okay. Oh, fuck. Why would anybody eat something that smells of like feet? I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> See, right. at my wedding mm-hmm. i said mimo's here you can't serve the fish so we had to have a we, we customized you had to customize <laughs> i was gonna say maybe you're gonna order only fish <laughs> yeah at least all right favorite movie uh, i'm not a big movie guy but uh i don't know godfather no nah. i mean i love it but i think uh american beauty nice oh, yeah. wow that was a good one yeah you know what? Again, not a big movie guy per se. Mm-hmm. I'm probably the only Italian that never saw The Godfather from beginning to end. Oh, hey, wow. th- there's doctors you could go see. Yeah, that. exactly. I just don't have the the, the focus for three hours. For three hours, like like. But you know what's that movie? You know, there's a movie called uh, Mr. Saturday Night that nobody really heard of, and it's with. Uh, Mr. That's Saturday. why nobody heard of it. Yeah, <laughs> but it's it's about comedians. Gotcha. It's, a, it's about comedians and. That's why I think I like comedians. The same struggles as musicians. True, very but true. What was that movie? There was a. Oh, I'm, I'm a big Shawshank Redemption. Shawshank Redemption. Yeah, that's, that's one of my favorites. I know. Uh, yeah, I'm a big comedy guy. I love, I love to laugh. Of course, I'm a big Red Fox fan. So there was uh, a movie years ago called Harlem Nights with Red Fox, Eddie Murphy, yeah, I, I, Richard Pryor, and uh, oh. Arsenio. Yeah, you had a TV in the I hotel had, room. Dude, I didn't have that any movie. sound. I laughed my fucking brains out. <laughs> I loved that movie so much. We walked into a hotel room one night with him, mm-hmm. turned on the television. Fucking TV was broken, had no sound. I watched it in mute and pissed my ass off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dude, I'm not even, I can't yeah, make yeah. this shit up. No, I, I'm with I you, watched man. it in mute and I'm dying. I, I watched the laughing movie. my head off. I don't even watch the movie old school because the minute oh, I know it's on, God. I start dying of laughter. That? Uh, the old school uh, is with uh, Will Ferrell. Will um, Ferrell. Oh, dude, I was, a movie guy, so. I was on the road uh, f- for a, a business trip, and I was in my hotel room dying by dying. myself. I dying. can't even explain my son the scene. It's called yeah, old, school? old School. Old School. Good. I can't even explain my son. Like, as I the know. scene <clears throat> comes up, I'm like, you know what he does? And I start dying of laughter. That's, because that's it, the best. Man. It's, it's the fucking best. hilarious. I, I got the, much, still, you know, the maturity of, like, a 14-year-old when it comes to movies. Oh, and you know, that's so the best That's the best movie to watch. You know, it's stupidities, but it's it's awesome, man. Vince Vaughn is... All right, man. How's this one? You're going to go first. I'm just going to say rap music. What's your first thought? It's, my first thought is that I can't stand that hi-hat. <laughs> I just can't do the hi-hat. Gotcha. But I like Eminem. I think he, like I do. I do. <laughs> Fucking good. Yeah. Chocolate thing. Look, man. So he was, that's, a, that's those chocolates, no? <laughs> He's got some Shut cool up. riffs, man. I actually sometimes put Eminem <laughs> on, on YouTube and, and rip guitar to it. Oh, that's fine. Because he's so aggressive. True, true. But you see, he's old school now. I hear lyrically kids. he's a master. Yeah. See, now he's going to fire me from the That's <laughs> it. <laughs> not... What do you think of rap music? I don't. 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 Okay. That's a... This one I wrote just for you guys. Because I'm curious to hear your, your thoughts on this one. The Black Album from Metallica. What's your first thought? You go with this one. I'm not a big Metallica fan. Oh not, wow! I, I listen. I've seen them four or five times. That, yeah. That's because I'm not a fan. Yeah, exactly. I was gonna say. Uh, I'm not a big Metallica fan. That, that style of music, it's not for me. It's just not my cup of tea. Yeah. I'm not an idiot. I know that what they. I remember the first time I heard it. I'm like, Jesus Christ, this is good. Yeah, yeah. this is really good. Yeah, it's just not your. It's just not my my cup yeah. of tea, you know. Yeah. But uh, what a what a record. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, record. cool. I'm, I'm, oh my god, what a record! Same thing. It's like it's not like I, I ran out to buy it because I was more into like uh, Aerosmith and stuff like that. But I remember what every time somebody mentions that record, they call Metallica sellouts, and I don't get it because exactly. they're absolutely not sellouts. That's a monster record. What a record! The are riffs are killer, me? and yeah. and you could definitely appreciate, and it still holds up. Come on, when I listen to wh- wherever I may roam, yeah, I, I'm record. like, yeah, I, and you know what? I was I kind of listened to Metallica. That album came out. And then you I went can't and deny I did a deep dive in all their, all their songs. Yeah. You can't deny it. It's, okay, it's I'm glad phenomenal. because absolutely because most people will say it's a sell. I, I don't get it. I don't get, get why it. you would say. You know why? Because it was produced. Because they're not rock, them, that's and the sound was. 
don't want to say perfect, but that drum sound was like, fucking man, killer. Incredible, man. man. Holy shit, that bass show was like, dang. Incredible. Oh, man, yeah, I love yeah, for sure. Incredible. Absolutely. All right, this is a pretty simple one. First thought when I say the Montreal music scene. <laughs> find very clicky. Click. See? True. Very clicky. Something we never really belonged to. And they don't want never like, never part never of it. Never accepted. Never nor do I want to be part of it. Yeah. I again, because of Vinny and Frank, you know, and I I told you Frank's on and he produced my new record with, with Beth and I can't thank him enough. Mm-hmm. Again, that wasn't what we were after. That okay. click. Click thing. That's not Vinny told us a long time ago, that's not your competition. That is. And when you aim for that, this doesn't mean anything. So you have Montreal. Okay, good. So you went to So you played bourbons one more time yeah, than yeah. I did. So <laughs> it doesn't mean anything. <laughs> right? We shared the stage yeah. with Canadian icons. We, we played with Prison. Downchild we played with band. the Downchild Blues Band who played Woodstock. We played with, uh, with I, Mother uh, I, Mother Earth. We played with Trooper. Uh, we, yeah. we shared the stage. Who was that guy then? Uh, the guys from uh, the Guess Who. They invited me oh, up on yeah. stage yes. to, to sing uh, American Woman. I mean, are you kidding me? Oh really? Yeah. Wow. It's it's a it's a beautiful. Listen, man, Canada is is fucking beautiful. It's Canada is it really is. You're right. Yeah. And and, you get and the scene here, if people just open their eyes, yeah. it's amazing. And there's a lot of talented people here, man. Yeah. We Even in this talent. province, absolutely. There's okay. a lot of wow. fucking talented people Actually, here compared to the states. A lot. Of and talent. I'm telling you, man, if they wouldn't just keep their stupid click all the time, you well, know what? Years ago, remember when everybody used to say. Oh, we got to go to L.A. to become stars. Remember that? We got to go to L.A. Well, I had a friend of mine that used to live in L.A. And he's like, you know why there's so many people here that become... Because every guy plays with 10 different fucking bands. Okay? Yeah. It's not about, oh, I got to be better than him. I gotta, there's all this competition shit. And you know what we do? We kill each other. When they were helping each other. Remember Cinderella, Guns N' Roses. Skid a skid, they, they were all part of each other's band somewhere yeah, along. Somewhere. And you know what? They all help each other. And they're all stars. Yeah. Okay? They're all stars, and you're right because it, it was Here, the same. The same in the in the wedding scene industry. Yeah. Everyone wants to be it's better all, than the other guy. So you know, really Montreal scene. There is no scene. It's exactly. all clicks, clicks and clicks. Well, it leads me yeah. to the next one. Quebec politics. This is just for. <laughs> See you later, boys. <laughs> <laughs> get the fuck out! Don't even get me started. Man. That's why I brought it up. Yeah. Man, I just want to rile them up. I just wanted okay. to. You're, you're gonna get canceled before you even get on. <laughs> All right, this yeah, is a there good. You go. <laughs> this is a good best singer front person of all time. Okay, it's 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 for me. Like I, if I'd have to pick any singer, and I know it's gonna sound like I would say, okay, Mimo, let's do this, right? Because mm-hmm. I've been with him for thirty years, you know. But let's say outside of Mimo, it's like for me, Steven Tyler, nice. Mick Jagger, yeah. those guys. Like, so pick me. one. Who's your guy? Wow. Well, I think I'd have to go with Mick Jagger, just because cool. it's just Mick Jagger. I think it's the vibe, complete yeah. vibe that he has. Yeah, it's just okay. Come on, yeah. Like, nice. Have you seen him now? Like he, there's a video of him just playing a couple of chords on on his guitar mm-hmm. at, at at a rehearsal with the Stones. He just Dude, he's fucking Mick Jagger. He's just <laughs> that's it. He, he lights bang up Margaret Trudeau. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know that. <laughs> well, you know that. <laughs> I would say Mick Jagger. Fucking Mick Jagger, man. Who cares? Is he your same? Are you picking the same guy? He's fucking Mick Jagger. How can you not? Is he your guy? Yeah, I love him. I love him. I mean, yeah, I love Jagger. As a front man, as a whatever. Yeah, I love him. As a vocalist, I'm a big Ian Gillen fan. I told you. I love Deep Purple. I love Ian Gillen. I love David Coverdale. I love... Remember when I met Paul Rogers? Yeah, yeah. Paul Rogers. I met Paul Rogers years ago from Bad Company, and I froze. Me. I I had had nothing to say. Gotcha. I'm a, <laughs> it was a first. I, I shook. <laughs> it was a first. Like, what the? And he's this big. Like, if anybody's smaller than me, it's Paul Rogers. Wow. He's this. I'm like, I froze. Oh, when I was in high school, I met uh, the band Extreme. Was my oh wow. That was my band. Wow. Right. Nuno. I used to follow them. I love them. And I, don't I met you know Nuno. Nuno. No, don't I, you know I don't. Nuno? I think I saw I met, him at the Nam show once, yeah. but I didn't. I, I met why. Nuno and the band. Like they were on. Yeah. I, was, I was going to the concert, and I hear them on show. Yeah, so on the way, I'm like, guys, they're on live. I said, Let me, let's just see. As we walk into show, we open, they're coming out of the elevators. Yeah, and I cool. froze. Like, yeah. no, no. Sometimes it's starstruck. Man. Yeah, <laughs> sometimes starstruck. Right. Yeah. And they actually spoke to me, me and my friends, for about 15, 20 minutes. Some people are that's great. Really cool. Yeah. really cool. Like, I played wow, soccer was... with Iron Maiden years ago. So. Wow, that's hilarious. Okay. 
Here's a good one. Best live show. I would have to say uh, Deep Purple Perfect Strangers tour. That was for me. That was my first show ever, first mm -hmm. of all. And it was like I cried at the show. Okay. That's I was like, so I just couldn't believe girl school was opening up. I was handing my ticket to the guy and I, I was shaking. I still remember. Wow. And my, my heart started. I was 14 years mm -hmm. old. And uh, it was like, yeah, that was so from that perspective. Gotcha. Uh, I also saw Frank Marino Mahogany Rush with Steve Ray Vaughan at Jerry oh, Park. Ooh, okay. That was nuts. <laughs> That and that same legend. week, there was Elton legend. John. Talk about a show. I saw that. Shit. But I would have to say, uh, just from experience, the first one was yeah. always your first, you know? Yours? My favorite show I've ever seen is the, the Roger Waters show. Both yes. times that I've seen him. I saw him 30 years ago and I saw him a couple years ago. Same it's, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's it. How do you even think of that? Oh, yeah. It's, the wall there. Yeah. There's a reason why he's Roger Waters. True. It's, it's, True. You know, yeah. Yeah. Okay, this one's just for fun. <laughs> First thing you're gonna go first. First thing you think of when I say "Eat Thou Melody." Sad. <laughs> you know what? That's a good. That's a good answer. Sad. That's a good answer. Very sad. There's you. Just Mimo. That's, I think Mimo. A, that's not bad. Hold on, Marco. First thing you think about "Eat Thou Melody." <laughs> Mimo. Oh my God. Okay. Well, you know one? what? Uh -huh. Eat Thou. You know what I think of when I joined the band. When you said you're in my band. I said, okay, but I don't have an app because I had a small app. Yeah. And he's a couple years older than me. So he goes, I'll buy you an app. And he went to buy a Marshall half stack for me at Etel Melody. I was 15 years old. Wow. He was, yeah, he could pay me back. But I don't think I, I, I ever think paid, I back. paid him back. He owed me 100 bucks. <laughs> so but it was, look, it was a landmark. I made the mistake Sorry. like a month ago. I had to go rent some gear for something. And I said, I'm going to pick up my rental oh, at Etel. You just, just, no, you're not. Because it was, right? It's just. It's just so sad, used to man. saying it for years. It Fucking is sad. sad. I was, you know, what's funny? I was delivering the mail, and that was my route when they closed. Oh man, I was. That was. I would see. I would see Tony. I would walk in and give him the mail every day for a year about. And then one day I walked I'm like, no, can't be. That's I see the sad. fucking sign. That's a good Holy yeah. shit. description of it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. How's this one? I got two left on this game. What's the first thing that comes to mind when I say drummers? Could be good, bad. Because I know my brother's right there. My brother Marco is here. And if I would ask him this question, his answer is, they're fucking loud. That's basically what he would say. I don't know. For, the first thing is just, just play what the song needs, man. Calm down. <laughs> don't overplay. That's it. Just like, man, dude, close that hi hat. That's a verse. <laughs> God, you see, I'm getting, I'm getting instructions here. You? For me, when I think of drummers, I, I, again, I'm so loyal to these guys because I love them. I would take a bullet for all of them. Mm -hmm. I think of Pagliacci. I think of Paul. Nice. Okay. My drummer. Cool. He's, That's awesome. He's a fucking accident waiting to happen, but it's whatever. The best. It's the best. To me, he's the greatest drummer on earth. You know? To me. Typical drummer. Typical Just like drummer. he's the greatest ADHD. guitar player in the world. Love to it. me, he's, he's the best. It. Yeah, just the best. He just plays. What you know, when I think of guitar players, sorry to cut no, you off. No. When I think of guitar players, you know, what I think? the first thing is doodlers. Every time yeah. you're on stage yeah. or whatever, you're you, you're not playing yet. See, we didn't do that, right? So we weren't first of all because my cousin would whip you up bass in the head. <laughs> it was like so we weren't allowed. It was military or sound checks. Yeah, yeah. Fuck my cousin, fucking Hitler's brother. It was like, <laughs> like don't it, talk the guitar. Shut up, fuck. It would be like the drum. Okay, line check, drummer, boom, boom, boom. Yeah, then yeah. Would be bass and drum. You know, bass. Sandro, right? Sandro Bassani? Of course, yeah, he does our sound. Oh, Sandro, all the time. Yeah. Sandro used he to would love doing sound checks. He loved it. Because you guys are fucking it was, five you minutes. Because awesome. we're hungry. We got to go eat. Yeah, but, yeah. Then, but then he comes and he talks to each one of you on how to, like, uh, me when I play bass or I play guitar. Yeah, Sandro said to me, the then five minutes for Sandro, we're eating. He still works with us. We still we work with him all the time. Yeah. Our, our, <laughs> our, our, he he uh, recorded uh, three chords in a song, right? right? Yeah, that's right. Okay, this is a quick one. Best guitarist of all time. Your 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 opinion. For me? Yep. I love Frank. I love Frank Marino. Oh, wow. Awesome. Frank, again, the fan in me sometimes forgets that he's a friend. Yeah. And he did my album. He produced my record. He, he's, he's Frank and Vince Marino to me, to me, are the greatest guitar players. And not because they're friends, again, yeah. like I said. But Vinny, the first time I saw Vinny, I'm like, huh? Wow. And Frank, same thing. Both of them. So both of them together. To me. Not because of what they taught us, because they taught us everything. And I, mm -hmm. I, I could speak for him. Yeah. On this, because to me, Vinny and Frank are. They're, they're are you kidding me, man? Are you kidding me? That's hey, man. There's, when a guitar player can be. And a again, the fan in me forgets that he's that he's my friend. I had posters of the guy in my room, and I was producing my fucking record. 
Think about that. Yeah. yeah Think about that. To me, he's, a, he's, a, he's and this fucking animal here. <laughs> the thing is, with uh, with it's very personal, but with you see with you know with Frank and Vince, you see what they play on record. But we witnessed what they play. It's not when it's we're not. in their living room. And if for how as good as you think they are, they're better. Much it's better. not so even it's, fun. it's so it's it's like from that perspective. And the other thing is, I don't find there's always a, you know music is not like a sport, so there's a lot of bests. But I, when sometimes you just sit there, you'll pull out a guitar, you play Beatles songs, or sometimes you'll play jazz. He scared the fuck. Out. Remember the first time we met him? Biff? He scared the fuck. I mean, I'll tell you a story. The first time I met Frank at the studio, Vinny brought us over to meet Frank. And Frank's a big Beatles fan, so am I, as you can tell. Can tell. And he looks at me, he's like, "I heard you're a Beatles fan." I said, "Yeah." So he takes me to his room. Okay. <laughs> What's going on? He takes on a guitar. Yeah, it was an and, ovation. I still remember yeah, that. Yeah, he took, the, a, he the took a guitar story. and he starts, he does a version of Norwegian Wood, which is unbelievable. Okay. Love that. And he starts playing. And so play it. He goes, I'm like, what the fuck? He's just sing song. And so he starts playing. I'm like, I once had a girl. Or she, you know, stop playing. Man. He goes, do it here. I'm like, I once had a girl. Do it here. I, I'm like, why does he fucking scare me? I wanted to leave. I wanted to quit music and become a mailman. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, go deliver the mail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fucking shit, Tony. Uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, he was just wow. He's un fucking unbelievable. And Vinny, Vinny, yeah. Vinny's a god. Man. Vinny's a fucking. But they're like an encyclopedia of, of music, but they're also the nicest people you'll ever meet so i guess the, the the mentors that you've always needed and wanted. Lot, yeah. we everything we know about this industry good or bad mm -hmm. is because of vince and frank that's awesome and to me they're the old and new testament anybody to me, to me anybody that plays like you know i have like a little cassette of bb king live with the regal mm -hmm. on in my studio because it kind of reminds me just play what the song is for yeah. Yeah. it's like we're done brother okay ah! cool but just to let you know, it's kind of like guys like that that it just just not the best Does it, for somebody else, but yeah. for what they taught for, you. For you know? well, hey, look, if, if any player can be a mentor, that yeah. means mission accomplished. Can you do me a favor? Sure. Just play a couple of chords while I while I take this thing home. Play the one that you showed me. That's like that, that like that, <laughs> the K sharp. So, guys, I believe it's uh, the the album is going to be called Mimo's After Show. That's the name of the band. The album is going to be called The Other Side of Me. Oh, because that's what it's it is. I'm telling you, you, people think it's I'm just fucking metalhead, and I'm not. Eh? There might be metal in my head, but but I'm not a metalhead. Gotcha, I'm, gotcha. Uh, it's it's. And is there, where will we be able to find like? Do you I'm gonna put a, it on all the, on all the uh, you know bullshit that these kids listen to today or whatever. I whatever the fuck you want to call it. Where can we find you on social media? Right now, uh, well, you find me with Twenty One Gun Salute and all the other stuff with the, with the after show. Which mm -hmm. that's what it's gonna be called. It was after show. Uh, that's all being done right now, so it'll be released in the next couple of months or so. How about I, how about I say this? On sessions with Steph, after the album comes out, you'll come and you'll do an, a, a, a tune for us. You got it, brother. Hey, got is that, it. Is that, that, a, is that a deal? I give you after my word. If you guys will have us, if the cops are not going to arrest us when we get out of here. No, or, no, no, for sure. And if you fucking sure. like, I'm going to kick it because you've been spoiling <laughs> the fucking hour. <laughs> Mario, where can we find you on social media? Just um, on, you know, I guess Instagram. Instagram. Mario Mario Bifarelli, okay. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Okay, cool. There cool. you go. Facebook, Instagram, Facebook, all that stuff. All of that. Yeah. Give me that riff. Keep them going. Guys, thank you so much. I'd like to thank JJR Studio for, for producing this whole thing. This is Sessions with Steph. Check out our YouTube. We actually have a new Facebook page. There's Talk It Out. Lisa and Francesca. Lisa, thanks for being on the show. Lewis, thanks for, thanks for producing all of this. Um, Sessions with Steph, YouTube. And uh, you can buy it also. Talk It Out. Amazon Music, Apple Podcast, Spotify, we're everywhere. Check us out, like us, subscribe if you want to leave a comment, even better. Thanks a lot. Thank you guys very, very much for coming. What a blast. For having us, man. We're Thanks gonna for have you us. back. Thank guaranteed. You. This was a cool surprise. Thank you very much. Awesome. Thank you guys. Good night. Sweet.